going to share with us his experiences making use of our new site. So I'll just open up you. Good morning colleagues. Good morning. I've been part of e-learning for a long time. Prior to that, you know, as a contracted staff member as well on the initial podcasts and so on with Tony Jacobs and so on. But I need to give you a brief context of uh, EED and where we are and so on, so that you can understand exactly the position I find myself in and why I so readily use what CIECT has to offer. The most important thing is, what is EED? It's an academic development course or academic literacy course, and it's called English for Educational Development because we are located in the English department. But what I focus on as the coordinator of the course is I work with the first year LLB students at the Faculty of Law. So I find myself in a position where I have to straddle between two faculties, Faculty of Arts, Faculty of Law. Moreover, I got to deal with the English department as well, <laughs> as well as the rules and norms that govern that department. And I have another person that I need to report to, which is the director of EED as well. So I've got three reporting structures. Director of EED, Head of Department for English, Deputy Dean of Learning and Teaching, Faculty of Law. So I have more than 12 meetings a year, just to report back. So how do you address this? With student cohorts, in 2010, I started off with 715. So ever since then, I've made sure that the program can accommodate at least 700 students. This year, we started with around 615. After our semester one, we've dwindled down to around 588. The rate of attrition ain't very high on that statistics, mm -hmm. but in terms of actual numbers, in terms of coursework mark and so on, there's at least 100 students that are in trouble. But the point is, how do you communicate with such large classes? The other important thing of the context of the program is, you require, in terms of your service level agreement, a course coordinator, a lecturer, in addition to that, another lecturer, as well as a tutorial administrator. Unfortunately, I need to do all of those. So I wear a cap as the lecturer, the coordinator, and I got to manage the 12 professional tutors to service at least, in semester one, 50 tutorial groups, and then in semester two, currently, we have 49 tutorial groups. The problem here comes with communication effectively to your 500 plus students. Thinking back with e-learning and e-teaching and so on, that tool, the announcement that everybody has spoken of earlier today is a key factor. It is virtual, it's real, it's instantaneous. The only problem I encountered with the announcement on Ecamva this year was, there was a short period when you'd list your announcements that it never went directly to the students' group points. And as usual, you just pick up the phone, you call anybody at CIECT, and they are so willing to get down to whatever is the challenge. Not a problem, a challenge. And not even a few weeks later, it was resolved. So that chinks or kinks were ironed out. So bearing that in mind, what is the course objectives? And an AD program needs to improve not only reading and writing, and strategies of comprehension is to introduce them with other models and literacy practices at university and in particular for the LLB degree. And the challenge there is a lot of the staff at the Faculty of Law are very resistant to some of the tools that one needs to use. Some of the staff, when I would engage with them because of the high failure rates in some courses, how do we address that in the AD program would be that Yes, I don't even put up slides in my lectures. So forget where we are with Ikamva. Some of them don't even use a PowerPoint. So those are some of the dynamics one has to operate to as well. But at the same time, our learners need to be introduced to the different tools. 
So how do you limit it? And as other presenters have shown, you have your tools that one uses, and then you also look at other tools that one may use. Now I've listed here Turnitin, EED Magazine, regular participation at CIECT. The reason I put that up there is because CIECT has been integral in all of those endeavors in EED law. Whether it is turn it in, Mr. Nkunga coming early to give the orientation to the students and thereafter getting them to do a particular assessment, they are there with me the whole step on that journey ever since I've been coordinating this program in 2010. When it came to a magazine, to publish a magazine, Ms. Braff, including the other members at CICT, were all too willing to assist as well. But more importantly, when I decided to start discussion forums, I'm not yet at a stage where Mr. Kassant is with regards to using it as an assessment, but I've had robust engagement with students on, on discussion forums, especially last year, we would have at least 80 students commenting on issues of transitional justice, social justice, and whatever particular topics I would ask the professional tutors to upload in their particular groups. But to adjust and to migrate from e-learning or e-teaching onto e canva they were also given training. And the training that was given to them was done at the CICT, and the professional tutors found it very valuable. But what is important is how does this pedagogy and what informs it makes it very relevant to our students. I took a quotation that we all see in those mass emails that come from CIECT, the one by Prensky, where he says that we'll figure out how to deliver our products in a way that fits in our students' digital lives and their cell phones. <laughs> I like that because all of them don't have a tablet. All of them do not have a laptop but most of them have those smartphones that they fiddle with while you are busy lecturing a class. <laughs> so the point here is, how do I achieve the objectives of my program? Institutional objectives as well, and the profession of law. How do I interact and effectively communicate with a large grouping of students? More importantly, how do I share an authentic learning space in this abstracted mode or method of communicating? And how do you integrate the latest e-tools available at the institution with traditional teaching tools? So the solution is obvious. It had to be multi-pronged. The approach has to be multi-pronged. I cannot rely heavily on education because my earlier slide you've seen at the bottom there. Since 2010, every year I get at least 40 to 50 students who've never used a PC in their life. And one of the, in, in 2010 when I was faced with that, what I did was I called CIECT and I told them, what do I do with these students? And they said, you can tell them to please come to us. They don't have to do the proper formal engagement. And yes, hats off to CIECT for accommodating them. A lot of those students in succeeding years have sent me their first email or would send me their first electronic communication, including their first draft electronically. And it's amazing to see students who've never used a piece of technology produce work of quality online. So yes, the multi-pronged approach is working. The traditional approach, I break it up with your course reader, lectures, notice boards, virtual notice board, used to be e-teaching, it's now Canva. And then the two tutors, and I use the class reps effectively as well. The seventh component, which I didn't put up there, it's called the res mentors and the development coordinators appointed at the resi houses of residents. They are a very important tool to use. What is important about that is a lot of you are saying, well, what about the hours that one must understand with regards to using technology? Now, obviously, you can't be there 24-7. Neither can your professional tutors because they are busy with a PhD. They could be busy with their completing their master's. They have stresses and tensions as well, and X number of hours to allocate as well. You have the res and the class reps who have the other component to transfer certain things to the students as well. So yes, the Sakai platform is interoperable. It allows users to access and fully engage with online tools, and more importantly, that mobile device. A student will be in a taxi coming to UWC. They send you and the message on your group-wise, 
stuck in a taxi, 10 minutes late for lecture, don't kick me out, full stop, you know? <laughs> Quick, fast, so before you even go to class, you already expect the late cover, the taxi delay. So, besides drawing on the educational benefits of using the tools, they also use it for things to express courtesy, respect, and so on. So yes, it is something we should embrace and use. The other important thing is the embedding of educational YouTube video clips, developing a lesson with interactive multimedia components, inserting relevant images. A lot of tutors independently, last year on e-teaching, would upload and use on issues of the TRC, summarized clippings as well, during a tutorial. So yes, they fidget with their gadgets. How do you get them? They don't want to stop using the gadgets if you tell them don't use it. So yes, use your gadgets, but let's control the use for something that will make you learn something. So yes, it has been working. Unfortunately, all tutors are not very okay using this, even though they've had the training, because some of them are older, they don't like to use the technology, but obviously they get encouraged with the feedback from the other colleagues in the team. Okay, the setting up and the training and so on, CIECT has very adequately capacitated myself and the team with. I, I went for the Sakai training last year in October. Uh, we did uh, uploading of tasks, assessments, assignments. How do you set things? How do you publish MCQ tests and so on? The functionality and the user friendliness of Ecamva is far superior than that of e-teaching. That is established. The other important thing is how were the tutors trained with regards to setting up the discussion for her? And Ms. Braff did that very well. She did not only emphasize the aspects of the discussion forum only. She also went up on how do you take your tutor, you have six groups or five groups, and how do you limit it to your groups only and individualized discussions in each group? Because some of the groups are stronger than others. You can't allow them to engage with something that they may not find that stimulating. So you may then post different discussion threads and so on. So yes, this blended method of teaching does work with large group numbers. And yeah, that word I've highlighted, asynchronous communication tool. Yeah, you like to put it on your communication with us all the time. So I said, yes, let me tell you, it does have a role to play. And what it does is for us in law in particular, one of the most important things for me to teach them is not just to write narratives and discuss what you feel about something and who you are and where you come from. It's very important. But more importantly, the demands given by me, by the faculty, they need to learn how to argue and counter argue in a written format. But more importantly, we know that a lot of our students articulate verbally very well. The minute it comes to writing, there's a disconnect. So I decided that discussion forums fulfill a vital role in that disconnect. How do you transfer the skill to the written? So you get them to engage in these discussion forums when they're not in a classroom setting, they don't feel intimidated, neither are they in the lecture venue. They are sitting during a break at the cafeteria or they're at home, like the colleague so nicely said, relaxing, and then they can comment and structure argument. The tutor then can facilitate the discussion, steer it. Is there a lapse in discussion? Because their colleagues in the same TUD group are going to respond to them. So they need to think, they need to develop the argument, and they need to address what the point of the discussion requires of them. Some feedback from tutors. The training we received at CIECT was excellent. I gave them a set of questions to furnish to me after the training as well. Ecamva is more user-friendly than e-teaching. Students prefer Ecamva instead of e-teaching. Now, majority of my students are first time at university. However, part of that LLB first year has the foundation law program students as well there. So it is their second year. And then you have at least 100 repeaters. And then those that transfer from EMS, BCom Law coming to do LLB, they have to do EED because the ALC they do, it's structured for commerce and not for law. So this has been the trend 
with the students in the feedback that I've been given. The negatives have a question mark because whatever negativity tutors haven't as yet expressed to me. So until such time, maybe at the next colloquium. <laughs> <laughs> Student feedback, the more, more, most important one, is majority of the class, as I explained, first year at university, they're generally positive. We get the materials quickly. Unlike e-teaching, at certain <coughs> hours, it, it used to be slow. You had to wait to download and so on. Whereas uh, on Sakai, I have never had that complaint, that I have to wait, no matter what time of the day they apparently have access. They can use it from home and they can download the material. And more importantly, they can even use the smartphone as well as your laptop and tablets, which they used to struggle with with e-teaching. There were some students who had issues about accessing, but that had to do with them incorrectly trying to log on. It had nothing to do with the site. The other important uh, comment that I noted was the people meant CICT explained to us in class how to use the Canva. It was not complicated. Mm -hmm. And I took that very seriously because there's at least 40 or 50 students who've never used any technology. So you need to make it simple for them to understand how this so-called perceived complicated and sophisticated tool is not that difficult. It's easy to overcome as well. And the general response is easy to use. That is the key. Negatives, I explained this earlier on. I did not receive an announcement that has been dealt with. Sometimes you cannot access a Canva. That is usually when the university-wide network used to be giving us problems as well. So it used to coincide with that. So I attributed it to that. Migration and motivation for moving from e-teaching to e-Canva. It is preferred by students and staff. It's preferred by me as well because I find it more user-friendly. It is more functional. It's easier to elicit information. Uh, and I took another quotation from your communication from CIECT, the one about establishing meaning. It adds more meaning to the learning experience of our students. It's not this cold, abstracted method of delivery in the older methods. Now we are moving in spaces where they are familiar with, so we can interact with them with much more confidence as well. The next phase is to use the MCQs in assessments. I have done the training on it, but obviously I like to stagger introducing tools and not just overwhelming them. The first year, they have other courses that they need to focus on as well. And law, it's hard, cold, fast, and quick. You don't make it tough luck, stay out. They are more empathetic like we in the humanities and so on. So it would be done in a staggered phase and hopefully I have a positive feel about it. I do anticipate using much more tools on Ecomva as well, but obviously to complement the blended teaching approach. I'd like to thank the CIECT staff. I don't want to put all the names there. I'm, I would like to thank all of you and congratulate you on your efforts to enhance the perennial quest for advancing the development of better teaching and learning for both students and staff. Thank you.
struggle in the beginning. It does take it. Never have we said when you start this either in general, it's going to be easy. It does take a lot of effort, uh, but we just hope that it's clear to you that we need to support you. But even whilst we support you with a lot of effort from the lecture as well, and we want to thank Mr. Patel, I just said to one of my colleagues, and it's a wonder some of you are still here, we had such problems with each other. I thought by now, everybody would say, go away, one of you. We're not even moving to another system. So by the grace of the Almighty, I think that this was over us. And we could even now appeal to people that were so tired of systems fighting at UWC. And we're trying to preach pedagogy. And every time you you give the pedagogical values in the systems off, so people will just say, you know. And now we hear again and, and, and to see the motivation, and I think we're just going to move ahead. I know, so I have to thank you.